Welcome to another episode of Global In. This episode is going to be focused on the Industrial Revolution. This is another important topic because it definitely always shows up with a few questions on the regions, as well as can be used for many different thematic essays. Okay, so the Industrial Revolution really starts in the 1750s in Britain. And the definition for the Industrial Revolution is, is a shift or a change. A change from the focus in the domestic sphere or the home into urban city centers. So all the work and living conditions change from living in the home and the countryside and life focuses on the city centers or the urban centers. And here's a picture of I think what really encapsulates industrialization and we're going to cover all these different components. But first we have to talk about the causes. Just as a reminder, as you watch this video, please be sure to watch and um, listen. Richard, I'm talking to you. Make sure you're listening to this video. You can use the pause button anytime and re the rewind button, but you cannot use the fast forward button. Richard, I'm talking to you again. So let's begin. Causes for industrialization. Why does the Industrial Revolution begin? One of the biggest causes is geography. Okay, Britain has a ton of natural resources and raw materials. They have coal and iron, and these raw materials are used to power factories. Without raw materials in the ground, you can't power factories. So Britain is a prime location. Sometimes you might also see questions about Britain's rivers and harbors. This is a great um, geographic feature for Britain because it allows them to easily trade and with trade comes money and with money you could help industrialize or expand your factories and machines. Our second cause is the agrarian revolution. When we see the word agrarian it means agriculture or farming. We have new changes in farming such as the enclosure movement where we enclose off large farm fields and small farmers lose their jobs. Or we have the seed plow where many farmers aren't needed to plow fields anymore. The big part of the agrarian revolution is the new technology for farming makes these farmers lose jobs. The farmers have nowhere else to go for jobs so they move to the city where we can have an industrialized city center. And finally, new technology. With this, out this new technology, we would not have an industrial revolution. Probably one of the most important inventions ever is the steam engine, as it was a power source at this time. It powered machines and factories, even railroads it powers. There was also a flying shuttle and power loom, which also were machines that found in factories. One of the biggest things uh, that we saw were textile machines, which deal with producing cloth. And the flying shuttle and power loom go along with that. So this is a picture of British coal fields. All these dark areas are where we could find coal in the ground in Britain. And it may not look like just a little, but this is actually considered a lot of coal for a small island. Britain has a ton of coal that it can be used as a natural resource that's used to power these machines and factories. And here are some of the machines. This is a picture of the steam engine. Again, it is used to power the machines and factories and other aspects of life, such as transportation. We also have, um, this is a spinning jenny, and this is a flying shuttle. Both of these are involved with cloth or textile products, to, and the cloth and textile industry, or making clothing, really takes off. Uh, it was called a flying shuttle because pieces over here would sometimes fly off uh, and there was a shuttle piece, it kind of looked like, and it flies off. And it was incredibly dangerous because it could hurt someone who was working in the factory. Anyway, we're going to now move on to the effects of the Industrial Revolution. What are the results of all these things? So, big one is urbanization. We have people moving to the city for the first time. And because people are moving to the city, we have very poor living and working conditions, okay? People are working 10 to 12 hours, being mistreated. They're not getting paid well enough for a living wage. So they even have to send their children to work as well. We're talking awful, awful, awful conditions. Eventually, we have a bunch of reforms that are passed to improve the lives of the workers. Some example are labor unions. Workers come together to try and advocate for their rights. 
We also have different acts that are passed, or laws that are passed as well, to try to improve working conditions. For example, the Mines Act forbids children and women from working in the mines. Okay, And then probably the other big um, change is the new economic systems at this time. And this one I'm going to go to a lot of detail on, so be prepared. There's a big T-chart on the next page. New economic systems, capitalism and communism, and these two can get somewhat confusing. So let's take this time and sort these two out because they're very, very, very different systems. Okay, Remember, economic system is all about the money. How are we handling the money? In capitalism, it's all about the individual. You work hard to make money and succeed in business. It's all about you and no one else. You may also see it known as a market economy. Market economy is the same as capitalism. Okay. The biggest idea of capitalism is the government does not get involved. The government can't tell, cannot tell you what type of business to own or how much you're allowed to make or how much you're allowed to charge your workers. No, you have full control of your business. So laissez-faire is the key word for no government interference. It's all about like the natural, uh, natural gods of the universe to decide which businesses succeed and which businesses fail. Other words you might see is based on supply and demand. If the people demand something, for example, maybe the people are demanding that, I don't know, something silly. Maybe the people are demanding my uh, that I make glow ball and beat headphones. Oh, that would be a wonderful world, wouldn't it? I can imagine it right now. On the earpieces, there's a little globe there, and it says glow ball in. On the, anyway, I'm getting carried away. But let's say the people demanded this type of headphone. If you were to supply to the people at a good price, you would do well. But if the people demand something and you don't supply to them, your business will not do well. Also known as the invisible hand. All these things without the government and focusing on the individual is dealing with capitalism. However, in this system of capitalism, we saw that some people got rich and a lot of people stayed poor as uh, just regular workers, low factory workers. So capitalism was really unfair to the poor bottom classes. In response, Karl Marx comes up with this new idea, communism, okay? In communism, he's like, no, 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 no. It ain't fair that some people are rich and everyone else is just poor. Why doesn't everyone have an equal opportunity? So communism is all about the government getting involved to control the economy and split everything equally among everyone. So I don't care how hard you work. Maybe, for example... Um, one person such as Joseph is hardly working at all, and maybe another person such as Jessica is crazy hard working. At the end of the day, they're splitting their share. Okay, Communism is all about equal treatment, and the government is getting involved to do that equal treatment. Also known as a command economy. Also, sorry, Jessica. Joseph, about half your, half your salary. Um, also known as a command economy. C-O-M-M -M for command economy. C-O-M-M -M for communism. They go together. Okay, Karl Marx predicted that workers would one day rebel against the factory owners. He thought that this would happen because he thought they would get fed up with capitalism. This did not happen in Britain, though. This does not happen during the Industrial Revolution, and I need you to understand that. Communism during the Industrial Revolution was just an idea Karl Marx wrote in the book and left it there. Okay, it did not take place during the Industrial Revolution. The idea was created during the Industrial Revolution. The first time someone's going to actually use communism in their government and economy is going to happen during the Russian Revolution. So the Russians are going to be the first group of people to use communism. But in the meantime, Karl Marx says, hey, capitalism's unfair. I'm going to write my ideas down in the book. Read all about it. That's it. Stays in the book. Okay, so we have two big economic systems about different ways to deal with all this new wealth from the machines, factories, and industrialization. And this brings us to the end of our video. Hope you enjoyed.